What's up, mother looker? <laughs> I'm old Greg. I'm old Greg. <laughs> Hey, hey guys, <laughs> this is Name Pending. I'm Keeper. I'm Mike Culberson. And this is Name Pending. This is Name Pending. And we've got a Cabo and a Pearl in their chairs. You can't see them. I couldn't set up the camera for you to see them. You definitely can't see my furry dogs. No. Uh, Bo Duke is covered. Covered like in everything. Grooming appointment in his, the next couple days. His hands fur down. is a capture card. Oh, hands down. Uh, and then we've got October, who's being calm for once. Yeah, she's calm. She she got a spit with Cabo for a little bit. She did, because he was sniffing at her. Yep. Spanked her, learned her well, and now she's just like, mm, yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Caught me off guard. And now she's back to chill mode after you freaked her out. So it's been a week, but I'm sure you've read a couple books. I have, yeah, I've I've read a number of books. Um, the one that I'm reading, I think, because book talk. Yeah, because book talk. Yeah, it's the eleventh book in the series. Mm. It's the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. Eleven books deep. It's not the only thing deep in this podcast. This is called An Assassin on the Agenda by T. E. Kinsey. Right? So, the, that the, the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries follows Lady Hardcastle. Mm, surprising. And her maid slash best friend. Okay. Um, Lady in waiting? No. No. Like, like, lady's maid. Okay. Like, attendant. What, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I was just curious because I know sometimes they mix them up. That's yeah. what I was asking. Um, slash best friend, right? Um, and Miss Arm- Armstrong is her name. Who has a strong arm? <laughs> it's my strong hand. It's funny that you say that because Lady Hardcastle's brother calls Armstrong strong arm. That's his nickname for. This is my strong hand. But they're they're fascinating individuals. So when we come across them in the first book, they are getting a they've. Lady Hardcastle's per- or rented a country house out in the British countryside, and they're kind of going into retirement. And it is implied that they were up to some shit for the government before they went into retirement. I mean, we know we hear about moons out, goons out, but this sounds like countryside government shenanigans. <laughs> but this is based pre World War One. Okay. So I want to, I can't pin it down. I think it was like, I think it starts like five or six years before World War I. The pre Spanish flu. Um, and, you know, again, they're, they're in Britain. You know, Ooh. she is a widow from, she's a lady because she's a widow. Her husband, I think, was knighted. And that's how she got titled. Yep. Because the title carries to the wife. Yeah. The spouse. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to talk about, like, Guinness. everything that happens, like, beforehand, because the slow release of, like, their life before they re- their retirement um, is very fascinating throughout the series as they slowly release more information. But they retire to the countryside, and then, you know, they, they go to a friend's house, they, they have the manor up on the hill and they go up to their place and, you know, they're, they're country gentry, but you know, they don't have a lot of money because we're getting into the times where a lot of the nobility was broke, was broke. Um, but they still had nobility. I have a title. Nobility. Yeah. Broke. And shit. they still had, you know, land and assets, but they had a lot of debt and yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, and they had a, a a piece that they were going to sell and it gets stolen. And so they say, hey, we need to keep this under the table so the insurance company doesn't stop covering us. So can you do the investigation kind of under the table? We know you did some shady shit <laughs> for the government. So The you... good old boy system. And so this is the first mystery that they take part in. Ooh. 
Sounds pretty interesting. But they it, touch on multiple mysteries. And they, t- they touch on most, you know, there's, it's because it's classic mystery novel, right? Um, but it's written by a modern author. Um, it's based in the times. But with an older feel? With an older feel, right? Um, so your key tones are there. And anyone, mystery. anyone who, who likes to touch on, you know, the, um, because they do touch on the, what's it called? Um, you want me to hold your hand? The, the, you the woman voting uh, women's suffrage? movement. Yeah, women's suffrage movement. They touch on the women's suffrage movement. Okay. Uh, because, I mean, your your main characters are women, right? So you're going to touch on a lot of this as well as, you know, different aspects of what they were dealing with back then, right? Yeah, I mean, um, it sounds like it's a timepiece while also being a mystery. Yeah. With yeah. a modern artist, but has key tones of the past. And I thought, I think that the mysteries are well done. I love all the characters because the characters are very well done. So you're 11 bucks, 11 bucks in, right? 11 bucks in? Yeah. So multiple mysteries throughout this, these 11 books. Yep. At any point where you're like, oh, I saw this coming in the mysteries. Or were they so off book that you were like, oh, I didn't see that coming. I think that there were a few times where I saw it coming. But more majority are like, there was context clues, but I missed it completely. Yeah, there there were times where I missed it, you know. Um, part of that, I think whenever, especially when I'm reading blinders, or whenever I'm reading mysteries, I try and keep my blinders on a little bit. You try not to meta it. Yes, because I don't want... To I like the thrill. I like the reveal. Yeah. Right? So I try not to... Think I know some people get a lot of joy about trying to figure out the mystery. I mean, I try to figure it out, and it ruins it for both books and shows, just because I was like, it's hard for me in a book or a show. It's hard to turn it off. It's like, oh, well, there was this, this, and it's like, oh, is this? So I'll hold it to myself, and then just be like, you're thinking about something, and I was like, do you really want to know? You want me to really ruin this episode for you? And about I'd say about eighty percent of the time. I end up ruining it just because it's so apparent. Yeah. Like, it's it's kind of hard not to do it in a show. But books, I find a little bit harder to ruin if you... I, I find it easier for me to put my blinders on for a book than it is for a show. I will ruin a show yep. or a movie. But for books, I find it a lot easier. I would agree on that. Most of the time, I won't ruin it for a book. Because I've even talked to you about some of superpowers being one of them. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. And every single one of them was wrong. And I loved it. I loved being wrong because then I could... You were right about one thing. But you were right, and then you second-guessed yourself. Because it was a superpowered dude falling in love with the one girl. Yeah. That's what it was. But no, I. it sounds like this would be a... Anyone who loves mystery would be a good book series to read. It's a good book. The books are not really long. I love it because, like, they take time out for them to have dinner, to have drinks, to relax. So they're showing the lifestyle to, of the time yes, period, too. Yes, like, you get a lot of the lifestyle. You get a lot of the feel. So they it's talk, really a time period. They talk for the period, mm-hmm. right? Like, the language is for the period. And the interactions between Lady Hardcastle and, and Armstrong, like, don't get me wrong, technically they come from very different realms. Yeah, Silver Spoon. But and... they've been through some shit together, and they are best friends. There is no doubt. And, like, there's an age gap there, too. Like, Armstrong is much younger than Lady Hardcastle. Lady Hardcastle's in her 40s. I think Armstrong's in her 20s. Okay. But, Yeah. They like let's not make any pretense or mistakes here. They're best friends. Heck yeah. And it, it's that relationship and everything. And it's not a they're best friends but they're gay, which you run into a lot of the a time. A lot of now. the time. No, they're best friends. Yeah. Right? It, like they're best friends and it shows it throughout the mystery yeah. novel, it sounds like. Yeah. Very much. You you're like How many books in the series? Eleven. Oh, so you're on your last book for this series. Yeah. Or did you already finish it? Um, no, I'm on the last book. Uh, on a scale of one to five, where would it rate in your books? Oh, because I don't think we've started scaling. We, how enjoyable. We haven't. I 
So one I'm being, I'm going to I'm going to do a counter here and say I don't want to rate my book. Okay. Then, on because we know you're more sci-fi. You're I know we know you're more history oriented. Yeah, I, I do sci-fi and fantasy primarily, right? So not rating the book, not rating at all. Where would you place this out of all the books you've read? Want closer to it's a recycle and you'll read it again. Oh no, these are absolutely recycled yeah, books. Not like I said, not rating. It was like it's gonna have to be a minute yeah. because it's so vivid or this is gonna live in my brain for a minute, or it's like, oh, maybe in a couple months I can recycle I, I it. I could and... I could I could I could rate this as a, a recycle series. I could cycle back through this yeah, series. Rating recycle or it's gonna be a couple years before it jumps into recycle. I could probably recycle this book series relatively every couple yeah. of years, right? Um it's not like the cradle series, which I've I it's like you've binged it so much that I've, it just lives. It's like comfort food for yeah. me, right? It's like every Chicken time I'm waffles. like I run out of stuff that I was like, I need something to feel good about myself. I was like, I cycle back through the cradle series, right? Just one of those things. Yeah, not so right. I do right. I I want to talk about the way I address the book talks All on right. here, right? I try not to talk about books that I don't enjoy and that I wouldn't suggest to people. And if I am am talking about a book that for one reason or another I didn't like, I don't bring up the title or the author or anything like that. And I try and do that very intentionally. Well, yeah. Because I don't want this to be a negative segment. No, I am not. not a, I am not a book reviewer. So, when I meant rate one to five, this is on your personal scale. This is on obviously everything in your one to five is going to be reread. We can easily debate it in the point where if one I'm, to five years. Or if I'm bringing a book up and talking about it, it on book it could talk, be read again. This is a suggestion, right? Like I would advise someone to read this. Okay. Well, now we have a staple on it. We've we've yeah, delved but, into this. But I I early on I thought to myself, I do not want to be a bad mouth towards authors that are putting their heart out into this book. Because just because an I author like yeah. I read it and I don't like it doesn't for mean whatever reason, won't. it doesn't mean that someone else won't enjoy it. And so I don't want to ruin that for people. I we talked about that with Zach in a way. Yeah. Zach was like, Oh, I love this book. And you're like, I it didn't catch me the same way. Yeah. Like it was good, but it's not something I could read. It's every not something year. I would I would go back to. Yeah. Right? It's not something I ever get the urge to reread. So on the subject of women, is book talk done? Yeah, book talk's done. On the subject of women, suffrage, all that, they were all about putting themselves more out there. Right. So off podcast, we were Getting into a subject that I think would be really good on the podcast. And it, it kind of touches on sex and stuff we were talking about in a previous podcast. Yeah. But borderline, it's pretty much public indecent. Using toys to pleasure one another. Bluetooth connected with your phone. and Voyeurism. Yep. So how do you feel about that? Like, listen. I'm not going to say that I didn't watch pornography that included that, but I could never see myself being involved in that. Yeah. Maybe I don't consider that being adventurous. I consider that being indecent. I would agree. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's like I would totally lock a bathroom door somewhere and get it on. Sure, maybe. If the time was right and it was, we we're just flaring up. But, but a, in a in a park, no. Like there's, it's also a very private matter, which is why you would lock a door, which is why you would go to a hotel with your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend, and it's a very private thing. And that's realistically where it's at for me, because you see all these. Oh yeah, we, me and my girlfriend work together. And it's like oh, we got this new toy, and the boy or the girlfriend are playing with the toy, and it's just like on their phone, they're just vibrating. And you see them squirming go wild yeah it's like they're eating a salad or they're eating a sandwich and the sandwich flies obviously this is like all those white 
commercials where it's like mixing a bowl of salad and oh it went everywhere yeah now if i have this salad mixer where i push from the top down it's like okay this is a little bit extreme but i do believe people are doing this and it's just like i whatever floats your boat but i couldn't it's a very private i thing for me and i don't because what happens if a kid walks around the corner yeah because then they'd ask a question right but on that same note because we talked about this with the uh, pern tracking. Yeah. If the kid walks around, is it not still the parent's responsibility to explain it at the same point? It does fall onto the parents to explain. So. But, uh, I mean, that being said, like, I personally don't believe, you know, against a lot of the laws against pern. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, restrictions and everything. We covered that. Mm-hmm. But I also don't agree with voyeurism. No, there's there's some things I do think should be private. I and mean, we've talked about before is like I'm not going to make out. I mean, we ta- I think we talked about it with Ginger. It's like I'm not going to make out with my wife in public. I feel weird about kissing girls on the lips in public. It was like I'll do a peck on the lips and then that's it. Yeah. Not like ooh, ooh, Yeah, ooh. right? It was like, like what am I fucking 16? There's a few times your wedding Someone's about to leave for deployment. And I think that's really it. Like, I don't... You're about to die. Yeah. Like, or you're about to die. Like, you get... There's an unknown thing, or we're super happy because now we have each other's bodies with marriage. It's like... But we have a logo coming soon to go in the center. Do we? Woo! Working on that with Relic. He's the same one that made these. He's actually working on a shop. Is he really? So he's gonna start doing that, and because he made these, I'll throw him on a couple. I'll throw a link down below for his stuff that he's making. And I know I gave him a small amount of support. I mean, I don't know. I've gave him a lot amount of support. I I gave him a very small amount of support. I mean, but he's everything we've supported him with. He's using completely. I knew when I got him those tools. I was like, this is something that I would want in my shop. Yep. I know that he would love to have this. Shoot, a couple years back, I bought him a Dremel set. Like, new tool, everything. I think I spent like a good six, $700 on it. I mean, I was like, well, I'd, I'd buy this for myself. And I did. I bought two, two of them. Yeah. I have my own, and he has his. And he was like, oh, thanks, bro. And I was a leader to him in a, at the time, and it was just like, he's what? a He's a friend to me, right? Exactly. And, and I was want... like, we don't talk all the time, but don't get me wrong. He calls and it was like, what's when, up, bro? When we were sitting there and we were talking about him making that uh, camping chair for you, and he was saying how he had done it, I was asked him if he had used chisels, and he's like, ah, I don't have any chisels. And I was like, done. Well, I was going to buy some for myself anyways, so done. Oh, no, he's using the table saw, the Ryobi table saw. I gave him that, and he still sticks on. Well, it's it's alone until I can buy my own. Cool, I'll, I'll get it back eventually. I, I don't care. Yeah, like you're you have gotten more use out of it, building chairs, tables, across the board. He puts me to shame. Like I feel like shit about my woodworking. I we, haven't done anything. We need to have him on K and M at one of these points. Uh, I would love to. I bet he could teach me some shit. He, I think he could teach us both some shit yeah. because the the drill press you have, I think, is very similar to the one he has. Mm-hmm. If yours isn't newer, because he has a lot of old tools that he's made love to. I need to get a bandsaw. He has one of those too. I actually, what I want to get is they've got one of the the free, like the freestanding, the yeah. the free bandsaws. Yeah. Um, and they're not expensive. Like you can get a Dewalt one, and they're not expensive. And everyone I've seen swears by them. I look. I have. I follow a bunch of youtubers that do woodworking because it's relaxing Mm -hmm. like i enjoy it one of the projects that we're going to do fix this table oh but by the way you know what we're using the podcast table for the first time second time for the first time in like three months i'd say about eight weeks six months it hasn't been 
<laughs> it hasn't been alive for six months. <laughs> that Texas education is suiting you well. Woo! It's it's suiting you good. I can add two plus two <laughs> equals one. That's some biting <laughs> math right there. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Woo! Shoot. Trump's a felon. Biden's president. IRS is laying down gun rules. Oh, uh, fuck. So, how much time do we got left? We got a couple minutes. So, I'm at work, and Rich is explaining... Rich, bro? Yeah, to Rob about why you have to get a stamp if and make adjustments to this weapon because of the ATF. And I already knew this stuff, but the more he's talking about it, the more I'm like, this is stupid. It's so dumb. And it's so just, oh, fuck it. The laws are fucking dumb. It's a money making scheme. And it's designed to keep us, well, because you got to understand, it's more lethal if you, if you have the weapon configured like this. And it's like, it's a fucking weapon. So let's go back to when this, the rules were made. The whole point was to be able to overthrow the government at a time if they were doing something that wasn't right. Yeah. It was cannons and muskets. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. The founding fathers, I brought this up to you before, and I brought this up to a number of people where I've made this argument But not before. on podcasts. The founding fathers owned wardships. Here's the other thing. A lot of people bring up, they talk about how rich the founding fathers were and how they were rich white men. Nah, guys. They went into fucking significant amounts of debt in order to make this shit happen. Yep. They were in debt for the rest of their lives to make this shit well, yeah, happen. Well, yeah, George Washington could have just lived healthy off everything he made in England. Yeah. Like, what I I believe he was a very wealthy like, they officer all were, over there. They all were very wealthy individuals, either overseas or in, in the States, or and they fucking went into debt buying arms, fucking funding, yep, fucking everything. Supplies, the whole nine. But, you know, we got a minute left, and poor Wolf, I know you love these things. Oh, Wolf. Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? <laughs> All you, Wolf. <laughs> hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. All you, Wolf, this is all yours. Can't do it. We'll catch you on the next segment. <laughs> yeah, that's a haul. And you're probably speeding. I am speeding. But I'm always speeding. Everyone in Texas. Hence why I got pulled over here. By the way, thank you. Thank you, Bandera officer. I forgot your name for um, giving me a warning for, for speeding in my neighborhood. I do, I do appreciate you doing that instead of giving me a ticket. Keeping the neighborhood I'm, I'm, Well, I'm being legitimate on that point, right? This is not sarcasm. Um, it's hard to tell with us sometimes. It is hard to tell. I get, I get told that often. And if you're watching this, though, comment down below. We'll shout you out next time. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about in Texas? What do you want to talk about in Texas? SpaceX. SpaceX. So, they've had four launches. First launch, unsuccessful. Second launch, third launch. I think third launch blew up. Or second launch blew up. Third launch blew up. Or third launch blew up, second didn't. So, they had to deal with the FFA. He finally got the approval to shoot a rocket up into space. Got approval. It took off. And landed with the chopstick landing sticks at 23 meters in the Indian Ocean. Is that impressive? Yes, because most of the time the rockets shoot up into the sky. And everything else just falls and it burns up or just dissipates in our atmosphere. Yeah, old school. Uh, Rocket propel. NASA shit. So now we can actually bring back all this stuff. So this touches a multiple different topics. We're getting into reusability. Reusability. We can talk about cleaning up our atmosphere. We could talk about cleaning up our stratosphere. Yeah, across the board. Because I don't know if a lot of people realize... The layers of space? 
which I was actually talking years and years ago um, to to a very intelligent gentleman. I don't remember his name now. Um, he used to work with me, and uh, but he had first off. Listen, I need you to realize, man was smart as shit. I think he had a PhD, but he had he a buff of duff. Had a house built around a what do you call the thing? Missile silo? No, telescope thing. A telescope? It's not a telescope. It's called a observatory. Yes. He he had like a modular observatory delivered to his land, and then had a house built around it. Okay. So it's like the whole dome thing that like spins around. Yeah. And the yes, he that he was his house. It. Interesting. Um, but he was working on a software program to track all the debris in Earth orbit. But he was, and, and hopefully, I don't. I don't know if I did. Hopefully, I contributed. I wasn't able to explain myself very well at the time because he was running into data interference issues for for his data models, like, like frequencies like or more. Noise noise he was running into noise and what i was trying to explain at that time is what what i said was have you thought of an analog option for cleaning up the noise because less people use analog what i meant to what what i meant to clarify and i didn't get a chance to was utilizing waveguides to clean up the noise are you familiar with waveguides yeah. and how that will work and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. at this point we're talking about different types of frequencies. Yes, and yes, less yeah, people yeah. are using analog. Yeah. We're talking about, yeah, 5G, 4G, 3G. This is where we're getting really into frequencies on that one. No, oh, this, this is, this used to be my bread and butter. I'm so fucking out of date and I forgot so much shit about this stuff, but it's I used been to a love minute. this. It's been a minute. I used to love this stuff. Uh, Pearl. But the reason SpaceX being able to bring stuff back down means we can put a payload in there, bring it up, and bring all the trash back from the space station, from the stratosphere, from anywhere in our atmosphere, all yep. the rogue satellites that we have out there yep. that nobody has existing. Well, now we can have government contracts to pay for, to take it, bring it back down. Governments across the board. Now we can also start moving towards transportation. Like, at this point, we can throw almost a whole... S- a whole satellite in there, throw it up, done, bring it back down. The only waste we have is the propulsion systems. And that's just the liquids. We don't need to worry about any of this because the aliens are going to solve the all these are problems. Solve all the for problems. Them. Yeah, I mean, they're already here, bro. Aliens. Aliens. No, but this jumps down a lot of different trails. Like we could have sci fi ion thrusters, pretty much a propulsion grenade that pushes you into the. It pretty much a space taxi is what we're talking about. We could have space taxis. What's an ion throw. thruster? Pretty much a grenade propulsion. What's a what's what, a grenade? What's, what's what's a grenade propulsion? So you know the shockwave that comes out of a grenade or any explosion? Okay, so what's the explosion in this case? I don't know exactly. Do what's causing like the explosion? Science. Aliens. Listen, if you're gonna speak on it, I need you to know the details, brother. Aliens are causing the the lizard people. The lizard people who are running our Earth. government. <laughs> no, but now we can have those like Star Trek space taxis to go to and fro. And this does push Elon closer to his oh, we're gonna colonize Mars. Cause I mean if we can start pushing more this way. And well, then he made an offhanded comment on a podcast. He's like, Oh, well we'll just we'll stop at the moon and just build a the station. Well, I mean, that's kind of the first step, isn't it? You would think so, but that's his midway step. So I, I don't know if I've talked about this on podcast, but it was probably a few months after I had first moved out here. I had, uh, I was sitting there when going. When your dogs went from city dogs to country dogs? I was sitting there going, I really want to have a fire out at my back fire pit. Let, let's just give some backstory. Your dogs were city dogs. My dogs were proper city dogs then. Like, oh my goodness. Apartment yep. complex. Yep. Pool. Yep. Oh, we're going out on a Friday or a Tuesday and just drinking at the bar. Yep. And then you bring them out here and they got 
I have so much room. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's a doggy door. I just go in and out of this whenever I want. I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Um, so but they we... are still slightly city dogs. My food goes off at this time. I know exactly where it's going to yeah. be, when it's going to be. They're, they're very spoiled. They're very spoiled. Now they're just spoiled country dogs. Yeah, they're spoiled country dogs. But I had, uh, I was like, man, I really want to go out and have a fire. But it was a night when the moon was not out. Is dark, dark. It was so dark, I could not see in front of my face. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm like, why well, I'm carrying my, my diesel and my fucking chair and my alcohol and I'm walking out there tree. Uh, no, because luckily there's no trees. If you walk directly down this road. Oh, you're right. You're long strip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was that first experience of absolute darkness, darkness. and I love it. I do love absolute darkness. And every time I come out and. I intentionally don't turn on lights on the outside of my house. I don't install motion lights and all that jazz because... I don't have motion lights. I don't want to brighten up the area. Yeah. Light pollution. I like the darkness. The uh, darkness. Yep. Uh, the uh, darkness is actually really, really good for you. It helps your skin rest, helps your eyes adjust. <laughs> I got another flip. I threw one Don't back. make me flop at you. Look, it's a returnable. It's like a boomerang. <laughs> boomerang sandal. Started here. But yeah, I, I love I love living in the country. I love how dark it is. I love how I love quiet the strange it is. Strange noises every once in a while. <laughs> just ran I will hear someone doing random metal work just off in the distance in the middle of the night. Yep. And I'm like <laughs> this is the life. <laughs> I am bummed the time we're starting to look for houses. The house a couple doors down with a a proper garage. It has like four garage doors, a Jess house. Yeah. It was like, damn, I missed out. You should have bought that house when I was buying my It had house. a gate. It was I would have bought it. You you were moving at that same time. I know. You were moving at that same time. Y'all moved into that house. I see and I moved that into this every house. time I passed by. I was like, that house is that could have been gorgeous. Our house. It would have been a Jess house. That Hands house down. is fucking gorgeous. A Jess house and a me garage, and I would have had a cot in there for the late night. And we would have been right down the street from each other. And I was like, mm, now I have a use for all my electric. Everything. Everything. But instead, you live instead, in a suburban neighborhood. I live in suburban hell. And you know. And you love it. You're such a city boy. Oh, I gotta have my AC. Uh. I do need the AC. <laughs> Even if I was out here, bro, AC would still be fucking cranking. You'd walk into my house. Why do you have a parka? Your house is arctic. It's cold. Hands down. Because that house had like two or three mini splits already. Like, an Eskimo lived here. I could be here. But yeah. My goal is to be a pilot. Even if it's just a private plane, don't care. You know how cool it'd be? I was like, hey, Mike, we're going to Houston. Well, I mean, that's... And you're thing. like, okay, when? And I was like, well, you want to wake up at 9 or 10? Okay, cool. We'll leave at 11. <laughs> I was like, I always thought it would be fun to... And I thought one of my options for retirement might be to get a seaplane and just like... Travel around South America and the Caribbean. If I moved to Alaska, I would get a seaplane. I would. That way I could land on the water, do what I need to do, to and fro. Man, I've thought about Alaska a little bit too much. I'm thinking about Alaska more and more, especially with the way the world's going. Like, last frontier. That's the I thing. can live off the land. I could, I could live in the frontier. Maybe, Maybe I should spend some time here boning up. On my experience. Your survival skills. Yeah. But I feel like I could do good in the frontier. I mean, I got the wood cutting down. Like, we would not be cold. Listen, if we just live near each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, near is anywhere less than a mile. Yeah. I mean, you can walk a mile in about 15 minutes. It's not that far. And it's not that far. And then we have support. 
like it's like all right bike we're going hunting for food let's do this that would be awesome Oh, that'd be so fucking great. Oh. And the funniest thing is you'd probably have more wood at your house. <laughs> well, that's that's the other side of it is like I would I probably still have a shop. Oh yeah. I mean the funniest thing is let's just start peace parting cars up here so we can work on them. On top of the ATVs and dirt bikes. Fuck peace parting cars. Let's fucking haul the truck down to the states with a trailer. Load the car up. And I'm not taking drive, on that road. That drive fucking it back. road. Let's fucking do it, bro. So, Torque, I know you watch this. He he took, I think he he rode some of the road that goes through Canada. Horrible fucking road. Always has potholes. It, they just can't keep up with the road. With the weather, they're pothole central. Dude, I am not. He's parting a car up to fucking Alaska. No, you get the frame. And then you get the. You would do it. Let's just haul a fucking vehicle up there. Actually, we've got a truck. Let's haul a couple vehicles up there. Mike's just like, well, I got this expensive bougie. Oh my gosh, my brother in law. What about your brother in law? It's a Laramie. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking. So we're great. we're camping at my buddy's ranch. Our buddy and. It's just like, oh, yeah, just go up the road so you can take your phone call or do whatever. He gets in the truck. Yeah, I give him the keys. I was like, just take it. And he sits there for, what, five minutes? Yeah, we're like, what's wrong with him? So we both get up, and Mike's like, no, I got it. It's my truck. So he walks over there. He's like, you good? He's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And then finally he, like, rolls off. And when he rolls off, it's real fucking slow. It's snail speed. And I do I'm think like, the snails were moving faster than him. Oh, all right. So finally, eventually, after he finishes his call or whatever, he gets back. And he sits down. He's like, yeah, I just got up in there and I turned it on. And I looked out. And I was like, oh, shit. It's a Laramie. <laughs> yeah. And? I mean, it's a truck, bro. It's a truck. Drive it. What were you going to do? Run into something? Oh, no. Fuck. I got to get a new bumper. Not at snail speed, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no. I have this. Is that a scratch? No. Nope, that's dirt. Dude, okay. Do you know how many scratch I got scratches I have on the side of my Probably truck? A bunch, because you drove back yeah, there. Yeah, drive, driving back there. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, he was so paranoid about oh, driving your truck. Fucking hilarious. He came back. We were dying for a good minute. It was like, I mean, if we didn't trust you, he wouldn't have given you the keys. Yeah. Like, and we have insurance. I mean, oh no, I'm getting a new truck or I'm repairing the truck. It's not that big of a deal. All right. Short intermission, but we back. Yeah, no, we back. We back. Woo! Um, another Bruce. I wanted to talk about. Oh, dear. You always bring these heavy topics <laughs> that I don't like. I, I wanted to talk about. On. I wanted to talk about. The. And I'm personally frustrated. I don't know about you. You might be okay with this, but I'm personally frustrated by a lot of the support. Let's see. I'm being thrown behind Palestine. No, nope, fuck it. I'm done. Love you guys. I'm throwing them above. I'm done. <laughs> by by especially like you know the liberal. No, fuck it. They don't know what they're supporting. The gay community. I I mean, there's that drag queen who there is videos of her. Did Pearl just go from one chair to the yes, other? She she <laughs> leaped chairs. I actually think you could have seen that in the center. <laughs> Wait, is she about to go back? Oh nope nope. nope. She abandoned. Pearl check. Pearl's good? good. Yeah. She's walking around. She gave up on chairs. You, you'll be so proud of me watching this. I totally moved this. <laughs> oh, she might be coming back up. Oh, yeah. Pearl, are we going? Are we going, Pearl? Oh, oh, she's made it. 10 points. Perfect 10. Yep. <laughs> and seated. Perfect landing. So, no, I, I am fucking pissed because half the people don't know what they're standing for. But I, I will regress a little bit, let you continue. So I, I, I was talking to 
Ginger about this yesterday, right? And she probably disagrees with me. I got the sense that she disagrees with me, Depending right? But some we, didn't, we didn't dig deep into it, right? But it'd be a great one to bring on podcast. I, yeah, I'd love to get her on for this one. But I did state that I think that the Palestinians were in the wrong, right? For, for what they did to Israel. And my statement has not changed. I've been stating this from the beginning, that if someone came into Texas and did what they did in Israel, Israel, then I would be after their blood just as hard. I think, I personally think, Americans as a whole and the international community need to step back and let this all play out. Because this is uh, their issue. Yeah, fuck around, find out. This is a, let them work this shit out. On one point, the U.S. needs to stop being a police force for the world. Yes. Hands down. And that would would fix this problem. (coughs) To me, because we wouldn't have our hands in the pool anymore. We would be Pontius Pilate and like, we're done. We're done doing this. We need to have our hands in the pool in certain places. Humanitarian, yes. No, not just humanitarian. We cannot be an isolationist country. We Correct. cannot be an isolationist country. I'm not saying be completely Any separate country from this. That becomes an isolationist country gets lapped and is no longer a world power. I'm not, Happens I'm not every saying time. isolate ourselves. I'm saying stop being the police power. We need to stop to being the, the point police where power. Our hands are so much in it, we're involved but in the we conflict. We do need to back our allies. But being backing your allies doesn't mean we're involved in the conflict. Yeah. But we talk about this Israel-Palestine thing. NATO sent all these tubings, all these plumbing supplies to them. And oh, yeah. Palestinians built fucking missiles with it. Yeah. To the Here's... point, to the point, you can fucking read the serial codes. Yep. On somehow a journalist got in there, props to them. You're. You're still alive. You still showed this. And they showed up years later. It was like, yeah, no, I'm I'm back here. I'm doing this again. <clears throat> but we have video evidence of this. Hands down. And NATO's like, oh, maybe we maybe we did do this. It's like, what do you mean, maybe? Maybe. The serial codes have NATO on the oh, yeah. half of the fucking pipe. I am sorry. Because they're upset because the the Israelis went in and, like, have hit hospitals and have hit this and have hit that. And it's like, these places, you cannot hold Geneva Conventions up, right? Because if you're operating you out of are it. not supposed to be operating out of these places. You cannot be upset with Israel for going after the locations where they're operating out of. And, and- I am sorry. Because all of these first world countries have, especially America, have forgotten what war entailed. They have forgotten what war entailed. Because, guess and what? you know what? People can't get mad for the simple fact that Israel still put out a notice. Leave these places if you're a civilian. Leave these places. Because if they're operating out of these places, we're going to bomb them. Because they're operating them. Okay, if they're held hostage, okay, cool. That's a gray area. But at the end of the day, war is war. There will always be casualties of war. There will always be innocent casualties of war. Yep. People forget what war is. It's not this fucking surgical fucking bullshit. None of this is. None of this is. This ties in the same shit that happened in Afghanistan. We were there for how many years? Who was there before us? Who was there before them? Afghanistan has been a constant cesspool of people trying to... I'm... No, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. It was not a constant cesspool. You're right. There was a time period, I think, from the 47 to 80s that it was good, and they were thriving. And before that, during, you know, Persian Empire times and other Correct. times, there have been periods of times where they thrive, where they have thrived. But every time there's been an outside force occupying them, 
They've gone back to Stone Ages. Mm -hmm. Even us, even America, they went back to Stone Ages. Like they're they're carrying shit around on carts because that's the only thing they have. And then we left, and everyone, what happened? Everyone's they got dying, rolled up, and they got caught now, up. That being said, that was one thousand percent. One thousand percent on our politicians, because it wasn't like with Iraq, because when we did the drawdown in Iraq, we let them know way ahead of time. Yep. It was all planned. It was a out. proper transition of power. Yes. When we pulled out of Afghanistan, a paper was signed and people were gone. Yeah. All the support. To the point, people are falling off airplanes leaving. Yeah. To the point to where, because. The way we had trained their military was to have air support when engaging the enemy. Their air support was gone overnight. And this now, is where politics has gone too far. We, we've gone no, very far astray. There, there's still connection. So, this proves an occupying body into a force, into a country, has ruined it. Okay, well, we have Palestine of Israel. Who is occupying what? We know the Jewish population has been here for so long. Gaza. Yeah, the Gaza, Gaza Strip. Gaza and Israel. So they've been here for so long, and Palestine's been here for so long, that we can easily date it back historically to the Roman Empire. Easily. Like, it's like, oh, well, when did Palestine own it? Oh, well, here. Well, when was it officiated? Oh, 1950s, ni somewhere 1950s, 60s. It's like, okay, but before that, who owned it? Oh, well, Rome? Like, but nobody knows what they're actually backing. Yeah. Like, you talk about from the river to the sea. What are we talking? We're talking about all the land. Yeah. So you don't want Jewish population across the board on the land. So we're talking about a final solution. We're talking mm -hmm. about removing them, eradicating them from the earth. So we don't want Jews anymore. And that's what Palestine is. Palestine people are going for. I, I mean, for. That, that's what Israel is surrounded by. Correct. Israel is surrounded by a number of countries, and they tried to make it happen. What was it, the 80s or the 90s? They tried to make it happen. And Israel came down, brought the hammer down, and whooped the shit out of fucking everybody. This is what I'm saying. I am saying that these motherfuckers from our fucking country who are so far removed that and have know. never been involved, because they don't know what it's like in Iran for these fucking, for the normal people. I they don't know what it. it's like they in They don't know what it's like in people. a third world country. Or even in a second world country. No. They're silver spoon through and through. Or even they're star athlete and they just have this ideal that's been given to them. That was like, oh, well, I care about this because everyone else cares about this. But you see everyone talking about it. It's like, why do you care about this? Do you know what this means? You've chanted it. Do you know what this means? Do you, do you know what this do means? Do you really know what you're fucking standing on a platform for? Like, and do I, you know I what get, you're chanting? Do you, it, I get so frustrated. I get so frustrated by by the homosexuals and the drag queens you, and the everyone else. You know else. they want you dead, right? They would kill you. Like, why are you building a platform in our you, country for these people? You want people? them to... The same way we had American ISIS brides. It was like... You know you're going to be one of, like, a couple hundred, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and they those, don't care. All these years later, it was coming out how fucking horrible much of an them. atrocity that was for these people. It's like, don't tell me you support something and know nothing about it. It's like, oh, well, I support the left or I support the right. Okay, well, do, what do they stand for? Do they support your values? Yeah. Do they like, support your values? Well, I support Palestine. What do they stand for? Well, I'm a gay individual, and me and my husband, or me and my boyfriend, or girlfriend, or wife, and yeah, motherfucker, they you would know they would kill you in the streets they and would, drag your dead carcass everywhere. Yeah, they would parade you around and be like, "We have killed this person, this homosexual person." Like women, like I don't understand because women don't have rights in these places. Shoot. But you're well, supporting this. I think it was what? Because 20, America bad. America bad. Before 2012, there was no women drivers. They didn't have a driver's license. I think it was 2012. I could be wrong in the year. But whatever year it was, they couldn't drive. And there's jokes around us like, oh, up until this year, we didn't have car wrecks. It's like, okay, we're joking about it. But they couldn't fucking drive up until whatever year. 
Saudi Arabia was like, ah, oh, women can drive now. Think you have to walk behind your husband in most Muslim countries. Yes. Okay, so you're not an equal. Here in a bunch of first world countries is like, I'm holding your hand. I'm walking with you. You're walking on the inside. I'm walking on the outside. And that started hundreds I'm, of years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm treating you with value. So that way, if a car comes, a vehicle comes, whatever comes, or if they're throwing shit out the windows, it lands on me and not you because you're closer to the wall. Yeah. No, you walk behind me because you're lesser. And we're supporting an organization, an alliance, whatever you want to call it, of people that are like, you're gay, we don't fucking care about you, die. It is, we are too focused on America bad, Israel bad, well, they, they're, they're killing innocent people, they're dying, motherfucker, you do not know what's going on, you don't know what war is like, and they're like, well, these soldiers are doing these things and they're filming these videos where they talk shit. And so you it's see like, their propaganda. Congratulations. You are being fed into the lie. Even if it's not propaganda, if it's a soldier out there going, oh yeah, I'm going to kill me a bunch of these motherfuckers. Guess what that is? It's killer be killed mentality. It's not just that. It is a psychological removal for a soldier to consider a person no longer a person. How do you think a at the soldier, end of the day, I'm going fucking home as a soldier. How do you think that they can psychologically conceptualize killing so many people? You turn off humanity. You, they, they, your enemy is no longer a person. And we have seen it in every world war. We have seen it in Vietnam. We have seen it in every war. We've seen this in every conflict. Yes, in it's, every conflict. It's kill or be killed. And at the end of the day, I'm going home. And, and that's why. That's why they get these fucking name, these nicknames to their enemy and stuff, these derogatory names to their enemies. It is, it is the way for a soldier to lessen the humanity of the other individual. Yes, because you, in order to kill on that level, you cannot see them as a person anymore. When we're getting into the psychology of it, you can't see them as a person anymore. I can't, me personally, I can't support something I don't fully know something about. I can't. It drives me crazy. Every organi organization I've ever been a part of, it's like, okay, we stand for this. Ooh, things have changed. I think it's time to see my way out. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't support this because my heart's not in your ideal now. Right. So, if I was someone who is in academia right now, anyone in academics, anyone in college, anyone learning, it's like, am I just taking what someone says? Because obviously, I don't know what the river to the sea means. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I don't know what that, these that chants just, were saying. That I just sounds like some fucking religious nonsense. It's just, we're just, we're just chanting. Yeah. But, but do you know what it means? Okay, well, that, that means everyone on this land of ground is dead. Not removed, dead. Ooh, that, that, that puts a heavy weight to it. They, what they are chanting, talking about how Israel is trying to commit genocide. Israel isn't trying to commit genocide. Israel is trying to... Well, that specific chant and a couple of the other chants are the removal of Jews. Yeah. The Jewish population. Removing broke. Jews is genocide. Correct. That is genocide. Like, What's going on in Gaza is not genocide. But here's the other side of this, right? Here's where I get really pissed, is everyone's real fucking quiet about all the genocide shit that fucking China's done. No one's fucking standing up for that shit. No one's giving a fuck about that shit over the years. China, North Korea, Russia. Every, all of these places have fucking wiped out entire peoples and cultures. Why has fucking Ukraine disappeared off everyone's existence? No one's talking about Ukraine now. It's like, what the fuck's happening in Ukraine that everybody's like, oh, because we care about Israel. Ukraine's about to get rolled up. That's why. Ukraine's about to get rolled up. So, from that statement alone, I know you don't have the same sentiment it's like well we don't care about it because they no longer us protesting does nothing for them it's like we don't care about it anymore. but a lot of college people i know you care about it but a lot of college kids are like a lot of academia across the borders well we protested it if they can't do their own then we'll move on to something else well then how much did you really care or was this just the pop culture that you were following along with? 
right? And like jumping like, down this fucking. Do you really pop- actually give a shit about anything? Jumping down this pop culture chaos is like we've seen it across the board. Is like people are just being extreme towards cops. It's like okay, you have a permit to here to do this to protest, whatever. But you're on college campus and you're doing this. They ask you to leave. Please leave. Yeah, this is private property. Leave, and then they get violent. It's like, oh, well, you're the government. You can't touch me. Well, I've asked you to leave, and then you threaten me. So it's game time. You're done. Leave now. That that's the nicest way I'm going to say it. And they don't. They're like, oh, well, I'm protesting. Legally, here you're fucking not. Yeah. You you have no legal right to protest this specific issue here. They asked you to leave. They called us. We're telling you to leave. You're not doing it? All right, game time. Now the cops come in, remove them, aggressively, non-aggressive. They're doing their fucking job. And half the time they're like, well, I'm doing this because this is what is right. How do you know what's right if you don't know what the fuck you're chanting? Yeah, I mean, that's what frustrates me the most is because, you know, you see it all the time. People walk through these crowds of protesters and they're like explain your point explain what you're protesting so we had that here in san antonio i went down for a couple of the blm riots and i was just there to minister i was armed ministering as a white male yeah they're mad at me it's like oh it's like i'm not stopping you go ahead protest i'm here to make sure the shops are safe my city's safe yeah I'm not stopping you from protesting. And most of them were like, really? Like, protest. Walk down with pitchforks. Do whatever. I'm here to make sure people are safe. People need self-aid buddy care. People need help. Yeah. And I'm keeping the city safe. That's it. I'm not stopping you. Go ahead. I don't want this to be a Portland. I don't want this to be one of these places. Roll down the streets with pitchforks and fire. Coaches. I don't want this to be one of those cities where they burn the fucker down. Well, it was very interesting in all these riots, especially with BLM. Somehow bricks were put on the corners of the street. Even in San Antonio. Pallets of bricks. Pallets. Pallets of bricks on multiple corners of the street. And with these Palestine, we haven't got to the riots yet. I haven't seen really any riots, just giant protests that have slightly gotten aggressive and hopefully it just stays that way and doesn't progress further we're at a point that one people don't know what they're they're I, talking about i know, know this shit for. sounds like conspiracy theory right i know it sounds like conspiracy theory the problem is is that we do in in i'm going to state this and i have no research to back it up right this is all hearsay from other individuals but based off of what I've been told by these other individuals, what busting is, individuals down? Well, no. There have been instigators, people who are either hired or, you know, Influenced federal, federal actors. people there to influence these protests in certain directions to cause things to happen. I don't know. When I was downtown, I didn't see it. So I can't confirm or deny that that's the thing that that's why i'm stipulating i have done no research on this when i was down there it was protecting a couple of the bars that i was a regular at that i enjoyed going to and i was there to keep like i said the people safe period i don't care what race you are didn't care what color you were don't care i think one dude tripped he ended up landing on i don't know our broken road downtown yeah and he cut his leg up so I didn't stitch him up, but I covered it up, called EMT, they showed up. I think it was a Asian EMT and a Hispanic EMT that came out, and then they brought him to whatever hospital they took him to. Yeah. But nobody cared. Like, okay, cool. You're protesting. You have a legal right. I served so you could have this legal right to protest. Yeah, I I'm not literally, stopping you. I want you to be able to protest. Here's the thing. I is, care about the town I live in is a lot like Martin Luther King. I want them to stay as peaceful protests. I don't want this to turn into, let's burn down the city. We shouldn't have let's a violent protest. Let's someone. Let's 
Do you know when it should become a violent protest? I'm all ears. Is when your government has actually, factually, infringed on people's rights. I don't think we're there yet. We I are do not think there yet. We have a potential there to is get the close. Po- there's the potential. But potential isn't close. No. It I has a possibility. I don't think we're there yet. But when I'm talking about actual and factual, I'm talking about like the shit that Stalin did. I'm talking about like the shit that North Korea did. I'm talking about like the shit that it's why I want But you know every those... Go ahead. It's why I want every citizen armed. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're liberal. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care what you are. I want every American citizen to be armed and to have the ability to be armed. Not just that, but I want them to be competently armed. You need to have the ability to defend yourself. Yes. Because realistically, fastest time, five minutes. You know, a normal firefight, 45 seconds. And here's the thing. The government is not your friend. What is the most terrifying thing that you can be told? I am the government and I am here to help. I am here to help. Calm down, Hitler. (laughs) Calm down, Russia. Like, like, like this is, this is what I don't want. And so I don't, I know that some people are, Seriously jumps back to the main topic. Palestine and Israel. Yeah. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? We shouldn't be defining that. We it's and not at our the place. End of the day, why are we driving driving this train so hard? It's like you're chanting stuff you don't know what it means. And half half of the people, they don't support you. Yeah. Like, okay, you're supporting them, but it's a one way support. Yeah. Like they don't care if you live or die. No. Oh, they'd you're white? Just, they definitely fucking hate you. They'd be you. okay if you died. Oh, you have sexual relations with the same sex? They care less about you now. You're lesser than human by them. Like, congratulations. You're in America where, honestly, I don't give a shit if you're gay. Yeah, you have a right to do whatever, pretty much whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't care. Go, go be gay. But you're not going to get that in a lot of these Middle Eastern countries. In a lot of, in a lot of, a lot of places other than America, most most places that are not first world countries, even some first world countries, are not cool with it. Like a large majority, even aren't cool with it. It's like, you can be gay, but you can't be married. It's like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, but Palestine, no, you either believe in what we believe in. Stop supporting people who won't support you. It's really, just, at the end of the day, what what the fuck is wrong it's with a, you? It's a two-way street. It very much should be. Support them, they'll support you. If they're not going to do that, why are you supporting them? I didn't support the like, BLM like, movement, but I you, went down there to make sure people were protected and providing safety for everyone. They won't support you and me because of our opinions, right? But I would happily support them. Yeah. Despite our opinion. Yep. Hands down. It's. uh, It's annoying to have an uneducated society right now that only believes what they're told. Critical thinking. It's not taught. It's not. It's not. We don't have it in our society now. And, And it's honestly. School's not going to teach it. It's on the parents. It is on the parents. And parents, if you aren't teaching your kids how to think in an educated way, I'm not saying in your way, in an educated way. Your kids will disagree with you and should disagree with you. I need you. I need them to disagree with you in a manner that is a critical thought process. While still being respectful. Yeah. Because the only way you can even get your point across, even going back to our founding fathers, they were still respectful in everything they sent back to England. Mm-hmm. They still addressed him as king. All so right, but we'll jump on with you in a second. 
for King for Initiative. But here we go, King for an issue. King for an issue. So I have a personal issue with tires. 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 This is on a vehicles. very weird issue. Can you elaborate on what your issue is? I plan on it if you let me fucking talk. No. So I need you to explain to me what the issue with tires on the tire issue is. All right. So my issue with tires is <laughs> they have a very vulnerable weakness. They can pop. They can tear. They're made of rubber. Okay. But we already have other tires that don't pop, that have this more durability in nails and screws. Well, okay. So I know the ones that you're talking about, but those did not have the longevity that you're talking about. Okay. So how do we build the longevity to have tires that we don't have to worry about popping or airing up or changing your summer air and winter air? Like, how do we fix the issue of the durability of tires? First off, you have to make the tire empire not a thing. Well, this is why it's king for an issue. I mean, li literally, if there is... It, I mean, it's the same reason that we don't have hydrogen cars, right? I mean, why king for an issue is such a great topic because fix the issue issues is tires last at most 50 to 60 thousand miles at most realistically you're probably going to catch a tail freaking not was it freaking nailing your tire you're going to catch something that you're going to have to change before yeah and tires have very quickly become more expensive and it's yeah. not from our lack of oil yeah They've just become more expensive. So, how do we fix the durability of tires across the board? Whether it's the technology that was like, okay, well, but well, they don't last as long. Here's, here's, an, here's an argument. Why don't we stop pushing electric cars? But electric cars aren't the tire issue. Well, My tires they're part, are still they're good. part of the tire issue. How so? Because an electric car will burn through tires faster than a normal car. Yeah, if you're abusing it. No, period. Because of the weight. Okay. Same way semis would. I could see that. Yeah. So we're talking about brake speed. Yep. Speed across the board and weight. But how does that fix the tire issue for all cars? There. Do you know of any patents? That have longer lasting tires? I mean, they're owned by the government. Are they? We have a federal, the government, the U.S. government has a federal patent on a tire that has a, I think it's like 150,000 mile range. And it's impenetrable to bullets, to nails, to screws. So if we have the patent, why isn't it being broadcast? How expensive is that tire to make? If it lasts 150,000 miles. That's only 150,000 miles. Okay, well, how many miles do you have in your car right now? 105. Okay, how many times do you change your tires? Twice. Okay, and how much did that cost? $2,400. Okay, so if it cost at least $2,500, would you not spend it? You'd only have to spend it once? Knowing off this rate, you'd have to spend... At least one more time? Yeah, no, I see where you're coming from there. Like, cost would be cheaper across the board, in a way, because there'd be less need. There'd be less waste. There'd be We would have a tire fix because we have tires that... We already have run flats. Run flats can still go for about 80 to 100 miles. Yeah. So if we have a technology ready that does this is like oh well nails don't matter and it self inflates or it self fills or why aren't we pushing this further well i mean the realistic answer is money it's always money right i mean every issue we've i've brought up has always been because politics or money so we need to find a way to to break the money grub 
Now, I don't know of a good solution to do that, right? Because you would have to set yourself up with a company that can profit while providing a tire that lasts longer. Well, the good news about that, it'll, it'll be part of my solution, is we can easily do that. Okay, give me your solution, because I don't have a so comprehensive my solution, solution. I I stand by this. The federal government should not be able to hold a patent on anything. Indefinitely? Ever. You're not a person. Patents were originally meant for people. A single entity, not a group of people, not a organization, a single person. The CEO of the company has a patent for this. He has to sign it over when he leaves CEO. So if we have that already, why does the federal government have it all? Like that that doesn't logically make sense to me. Could be wrong, but that was my understanding of reading and understanding patent patent law. I don't under I don't know patent law at that level. Well, like I said, this I could totally be wrong. Throw You're in the comments wrong. down below. I would love to be wrong. I enjoy it. I enjoy learning more and seeing someone else's perspective on it. But moving forward, I would have the tire that's set up and push it there. And the whole, oh, well, we're not making money. There's so many cars. You have a, you have a buddy that has 17 cars. Yeah. Right? 17 times four, that's a lot of tires. Yeah. Okay, well, that's one person. How many other car collectors do we have? There's so many people there. You're still going to run into an issue at some point with something. There's car wrecks all the time. Yeah. I mean, shoot, you drive down the highway. It's like so many people have died right now from drunk driving or sleepy driving or something. There's car wrecks. There's, there's still human error. Human error in a vehicle will always happen as long as we have humans driving the vehicles. So we'll always have a replacement for tire and you will always have a replacement across the board. Right. And manufacturers are always pushing out new cars. So the industry realistically won't take that much of a hit and we won't have to deal with all these bastardized tires from these, I don't know, your your parents' town have six or seven Mon Pa tire shops. Let's, and let's hold on. How many times have those tires been on how many different vehicles? Let's be serious here. I don't care if they're a front or not. Some of those, yeah, I mean, like the 15 tire shops there in that town, there's probably some fronts. But regardless, they're all over San Antonio. Here regardless? No, regardless. They're the same. They mean the same thing. They don't. They do. One of those things isn't a word. Yeah, irregardless. Yeah. But it's still in the dictionary, and they both mean the same thing. So, if we just completely got rid of the used tire business because we just have one tire. Listen, I'm just saying I want to pay 100 bucks for a retreaded tire because that's safe. <laughs> but that seriously that's my solution take federal government out of it you just gotta let that roll by <laughs> if i'm not steaming <laughs> but i think that has been enough for king for an issue um and it's complex so i mean if you have a a topic you want us to talk about you want us to fix an issue let us I know mean, and some of them are easy because sometimes you just got to glass something, right? <laughs> glass the Middle East. Glass heard the Middle East. First. But you know, or Korea. <laughs> throw a comment down below. I'll respond. Except for the one, your comment's so good. I, you, yeah, you that wrapped one it comment. All that was up. so good. I think it was at Ralts, Bloodthorn, yep, and, and like, the uh, and no, that's the only one I have. Re- nope, just Ralts Bloodthorn. Um. But throw a comment down below. You want us to talk about something, especially on King for an issue. I need you to fuck that like button. And tickle, tickle that subscribe. subscribe. I've been Mike Colberson. I'm still Keeper. And this has been Name Pending. Catch y'all later.